starting with Jason, and he's going to be uh, showing us how to automate and deploy faster with GitHub Actions. Over to you, Jason. Thanks, Navi. Yeah, uh, super excited to be giving this talk. I gave this once before uh, a few hackathons ago uh, on November 16th, uh, so you can catch it there uh, as well. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy to uh, share some knowledge and, and uh, show, uh, just give a little, uh, a little workshop on uh, showing you how to uh, do some of the cool automation stuff uh, all within GitHub and GitHub Actions. Uh, GitHub Actions is a free platform. Um, well, you get 2,000 build minutes per month for free. I haven't come close to that limit, so I, I just think of it as a very generous free uh, tier. Um, it, of course, if you have like really extensive, long-running workflows, then you might hit that limit, but I haven't uh, yet come close. Um, so yeah, today I'll be showing you some of the cool things that you can do with GitHub Actions in terms of automation and deployment. I have a, uh, an open source repo that I'll share with you as well at the end of the talk, uh, so you can really get your hands on, uh, on the code and, and uh, fork it and try things out for yourself. Uh, so let's just jump right in. I'm going to share my screen. I've got a, a brief presentation, and then I'm going to jump into uh, the browser and show you some uh, some pages and where GitHub Actions lives in the GitHub UI, and then uh, over to my IDE where I can uh, show you some code and jump into some YAML configuration types of stuff. So let me. Uh, I'm going to stop my video just to conserve uh, CPU and share my screen. Here we go. All right. Everyone see, can I get a thumbs up if you guys can see my screen? All right, very cool. And let's jump into this. <clears throat> so yes, hello. Uh, my name is Jason. Um, I'm the co-founder and head of product of FeaturePeak. Um, if you saw the Mint Bean keynote uh, about an hour ago, uh, you might have seen uh, my little uh, introduction there as well. But um, FeaturePeak is de a deployment platform. We make it really easy to um, deploy your static sites uh, and collect feedback on those static sites as you're developing them. Um, and in this talk, we'll be going over GitHub Actions. So uh, what, is, what is GitHub Actions? Well, it's a continuous integration pipeline. Um, and what does that mean exactly? You might have heard of this term before. Um, it's basically a way to run your CLI automatically. So some of the commands that you're used to running in your terminal, uh, you can set them up uh, to run on certain triggers and events, uh, and any command uh, essentially that you want. It's very extensible uh, and can run uh, granted that certain conditions are met. Uh, you might have heard of CircleCI, Travis, Jenkins, uh, CodeShip. Uh, I mean, they're, they're about 15 or 20 popular ones. Um, so many to choose from. GitHub Actions is great because you likely already have a GitHub account. Uh, so might as well take, uh, uh, take advantage of a first party solution. They've put a lot of work into it in the past year or so. Um, and it's, it's uh, quite, a, quite a nice product. And as I said, yep, you can run shell commands on your branches automatically. So if you've ever run like unit, yeah, unit tests, uh, like jest, static analysis, like ESLint, flow type, uh, anything that like kind of catches errors that you might make in your code, that's a gr this is a great place to run that automatically. So imagine every time you push a branch to GitHub, these tests would run and verify uh, for you. Also, if you're running like a, an open source repo and someone makes a pull request for, that you don't know uh, from an, like a, an outsource uh, repo, you can have those tests run automatically to make sure to verify that their changes uh, are safe to merge. You can also trigger deployment this way. So instead of like running Heroku from your command line or, you know, deploying from your own laptop, uh, once your unit tests pass, you have confidence in the build, you can auto-deploy as well. Not just to production, but to staging environments, you know, your own dev environments that only your team has access to. Uh, all those deployments can uh, happen automatically via continuous integration. 
But it's not just that. That's just one half of what GitHub Actions is. It's also a way to automate GitHub itself in kind of like this meta development platform. You can do things like automatically apply labels to issues and PRs based on certain criteria that you define. Uh, this is super handy once you have like a really popular open source repo and there's a lot of traffic and activity. You might see some of like the bots that like, you know, automatically mark an issue as stale and like ping the issue creator to, hey, you know, you need to uh, follow up with more information or stuff like that. Um, you can, you know, based on certain criteria, you can write uh, the actions that you want to run on your own repo automatically. And it really opens up GitHub to be an even more extensible platform than it already is. But if there's one takeaway, if there's one thing that you should remember about what is GitHub Actions, uh, it answers this question. Is this change safe to merge, right? When you have a pull request, you wanna have the utmost confidence that when you merge it in, you're not gonna break anything. So as many automated tests that can run in the background as possible, the better. I mean, there, there are some, uh, tests that, that change, you know, that spin up uh, the changed web page, take a screenshot of it, and then compare it to the master branch, like overlay it to see if there are any pixel uh, changes, like like one-to-one -one, uh, pixel, just to make sure that, oh, you know, this CSS change accidentally had an adverse effect on my margin of this div I didn't even think about. Um, you, you can have that test run and, and continuous integration as well. Uh, that particular one is a, by an app called Percy. Uh, they've been around for uh, quite some time now. Um, but yeah, you can run your, you know, you can fire up uh, Cypress and, and run end-to-end -end tests, right? But Cypress is basic, an end-to-end -end test is basically like a VM that you, uh, you, you spin up and it'll run through actions. Like you can automate moving a mouse and double clicking on an element or, or you know, uh, something as complex as like a, as a drag you can simulate just to make sure that uh, whatever changes you propose or are proposed within the current pull request, uh, those actions uh, and, and those, those um, that logic is, is still functional. So it's very, very powerful stuff. Uh, it really, it's one of those things where like the world is your oyster. Um, there's so much you can do, but let's just take a quick look at where GitHub Actions live in the UI. So you might've noticed this actions tab uh, in, in your repo. If you don't have any actions set up, it's kind of like a marketing splash page type of uh, uh, design. It'll point you to the marketplace and where you can install some uh, commonly uh, some popular actions. Just like GitHub apps, GitHub actions have uh, a spot on the marketplace as well. I'll be showing you that a little later. Um, but this is like every workflow that runs. Um, so you can uh, check on the tests here, kind of like a bird's eye view of each branch or PR uh, and the actions that you've written. You can see here on the left, these are all uh, workflows that I've defined um, in my repo. And a workflow is, uh, is simply a YAML file. Uh, I'll be going over that a little later as well. So not only under the actions tab, but then at the bottom of every pull request, uh, you'll see your actions running. So uh, they're, they're also referred to as checks uh, here. So here I've got uh, about uh, seven total uh, tests and five of them are successful, two of them are failing. Um, so then you can click on the details link on the right and you'll be taken to the logs. So you can see like, oh no, my, my, my uh, linting failed. What exactly, you know, failed? What, what, what caused that error to, to throw? And, and you can see here, okay, oh yeah, I, I forgot to update my snapshots. You know, I, let me go back and, and process that change. So it's kind of like, it, it, it's, it's, you know, having a robot hold your hand and, and making sure you dot your I's and cross your T's uh, every step of the way, super handy. And then some too, like you, you'll see, <clears throat> you'll see at actual actions um, show notices in the diff itself. So, uh, you know, right here on line 16, I, I didn't uh, properly escape the apostrophe and it's recommending me that I replace it instead with an HTML entity. Um, so if, you know, if you, if you're uh, org 
or your teammates follow a certain convention uh, of code style, this is a great way to enforce it. So we've talked about uh, actions and workflows. I also, I kind of use those two terms. Uh, uh, I, I, I use them interchangeably. Um, they're essentially the same thing. You can specify m multiple actions in a workflow file. Uh, workflow is like a YAML file, um, but yeah, just a heads up, I kind of switch back and forth between those two things where they're essentially um, uh, the same. So a workflow is a YAML file that you put in the .github slash workflows directory of your repo. Um, this is a special location um, that GitHub checks every time, um, uh, well, depending on the triggers that you specify, uh, it would run. So let's just go over some of the, uh, the keys here uh, in this YAML file. For, for name, you can call it whatever you want. That's how you refer to it within the GitHub UI. On is the trigger. This is very powerful. Uh, I have in, in the link to my repo um, that I'll send out later, I have links to the reference documentation where you can see every single trigger that you have access to. It's, it's, uh, um, it's quite a lot. Uh, you can even, so not just on like pull requests or like new branches, pushes, new issues. Uh, you can also set uh, things to run on a cron job. Uh, which is super powerful, right? You can you have the uh, capability of there was one one um, project I saw within the last week actually called Uptime U P P T I M E, and it's an uptime monitoring service that runs entirely in GitHub Actions. It's super cool, and and how it does it is it runs every five minutes. It's specified here in this uh, this on trigger as a cron job every five minutes. Uh, run this script, and the script includes pinging a URL that you specify. If the URL is down, if it 404s or anything, then it opens up a GitHub issue on the repo and tags the appropriate appropriate person, so that person gets a notification. Um, super cool stuff, unbelievably powerful. Um, good for like if you have like uh, uh, data in an Airtable that you want your, your front end to pull from every half hour or something like that. Super, this would be super useful if, you know, for the social justice hackathon, maybe you're making like a, a COVID dashboard. I know all the, the there's a lot of uh, COVID cases and, and death data uh, available in certain GitHub repos. You can make a GitHub action that would pull that data on a cron job, run your build command and automatically deploy to your front end so that your site is guaranteed to be up to date. Super power powerful stuff. Uh, then under your jobs is where you actually write your, your, your scripts that have the steps. Um, all jobs, unless otherwise uh, specified, are concurrent by default. So that means, and you'll see when I go through uh, my IDE, that you can run jobs in parallel. So any jobs that don't depend on the output of another job as input for itself, uh, you can run at the same time, which makes it uh, super fast. And, and um, uh, yeah, they'll be ready in no time. So then you can specify, you know, your OS. Typically, Ubuntu latest uh, is good for, for any JavaScript project. Uh, and then the steps um, that are necessary. So they typically include the checkout step, which means just having the pipeline be able to, ch to check out the code from your repo. And then any dependencies, like setting up Node with the correct version, uh, installing dependencies from NPM, uh, and so forth. So some workflows require secrets. You might have worked with GitHub uh, with, with secrets or environment variables in GitHub before, but just in case you haven't, uh, I'm going to show you that now. So what is a secret? A secret is just an encrypted environment variable. Um, you can set them on your repo. So they're available on the repo level. Um, and it's basically just a key value pair, right? You set a, uh, a key. Uh, here I have one called CRPAT um, for container registry personal access token and my NPM token, right? Like if I have, uh, let's say I've made a, uh, a module that I share on NPM that I want uh, other people to use. If I want to be able to push to NPM automatically via GitHub action, 
uh, the GitHub action would need to know my credentials that lets it know that I'm allowed to update that uh, dependency, right? Otherwise, anyone could just update anything. Uh, but instead of actually pasting your key into your repo so that other people can see, you encode them as a secret here. Um, and then uh, once you've set them, you reference them in your YAML uh, via this format. So secrets is a, a global keyword uh, that's special. And then um, whatever the key name that you define can be accessed here. Cool, super exciting stuff. I'm gonna be jumping into uh, my IDE now, just to give you some examples. So um, I've got this GitHub Action starter pack. Here's the URL. Uh, if you want to go to it, I'll be sending this out in chat as well. Um, and there, are, it comes with five common, uh, that I thought were common GitHub Actions, just to showcase kind of the power uh, that you have with it. Uh, the first one is going to be automated tests. And you can see it's super simple. It's almost, it's, it's very repetitive, actually, um, of the tests that I want to run. So basically, you can see here in my .github slash workflows directory, I've created a YAML file. Uh, it fo follows this particular format. And I've got three concurrent tests running. Uh, one called type check, which uh, makes sure that my TypeScript front end builds properly so I don't accidentally deploy a broken build. I'm also running uh, my lint command and my test command, uh, which is uh, lint is just something that I specified in the package.json uh, that calls eslint. And what was the other one? Test, um, which just runs jest, uh, which is a unit test checker. So basically, yeah, any scripts that you define here in your package.json, uh, you can reference them with yarn in, uh, in your GitHub Actions workflow. Um, granted that you run yarn install, you have to install your dependencies so that ESLint and TypeScript and Jest and everything are available within the context of the pipeline itself. Here's a cool one um, that I found in the marketplace. Um, basically, it automatically applies labels to, um, to pull requests, depending on the name of their branches. Um, so you might be asking, oh, well, how do you know what keys to add? And, and how do you know like, that this is called configuration path and what you, what you put in the configuration path and stuff? Well, there's the GitHub Actions Marketplace. So just like you can install apps, via the GitHub Marketplace, you'll also notice there's actions too. These are all open source. Some of them are made by companies. Some of them are made just by regular developers. Um, so you can see, I think it was called label PR. PR labeler, I think was the one that I chose. Now, just a heads up, uh, they have this CTA, this call to action button here. Um, when you click on it, I actually don't find this view very useful. All it does is basically copy these two lines. You copy them to your keyboard or to your uh, clipboard. Um, but really what you need, and you can see here when you compare, um, this is like, th this is the, the hot sauce right here. This is where, uh, this is basically how you, you specify your dependency, just like you would uh, you know, specify like a, a version, um, a, a, a package name in NPM and a version. This is how you, you uh, use it in GitHub Actions. You use the uses keyword and you can see it's repeated right here. So th this modal I find actually not very useful. What you really want is just to copy uh, from the readme itself. So I basically copied this, pasted it uh, into a YAML file in my workflows directory and then followed the instructions there. And then once I did it, every time I opened a pull request and the branch name match, matches the configuration that I specified, uh, it automatically applies these labels. So that's, that's kind of like showing off some of the GitHub uh, um, automation, like within the GitHub platform itself. Here I'm publishing a package to NPM automatically. You can see I'm using uh, the secrets, uh, 
uh, like handlebars right here. Uh, this references the secrets that I've de defined on my repo. Uh, if you're working with a backend team who prefers to deploy uh, via Docker or Kubernetes, uh, you can have your front end automatically wrapped in a Docker container and deployed to a registry of your choice. Uh, so just like with GitHub Actions, uh, GitHub now has its own container registry for Docker containers, uh, it, which is super useful. I'm a front end developer, so this is kind of like the border of my knowledge. This is really what I use to pass things off to the backend team because they kind of take their inputs as, as uh, Docker images. So if they say, okay, you know, what's the, what's the image path? Um, this, this is how I push to GitHub container registry. Um, and the, yeah, this is a little out of scope for this talk, but um, the link for more information about this is on the repo uh, I'll share out um, later as well. And then for deployment, um, here's an easy way to deploy to feature peak. Um, so basically, uh, the only difference uh, is I've added this step too, which is a way to cache your node modules. A lot of the time installing dependencies takes quite a while, right? It has to parse the package.json, yarn.lock file or npm lock file, pull from the npm registry, link everything together. If, you're, uh, if your package.json doesn't change, it's kind of repetitive and redundant to do that step every single time. So uh, this basically uses your lock file as a key and then compares that uh, every time it's built. And if it has a matching uh, change for your, your lock files hash, it'll just use the dependency from uh, the, the node modules folder from that time. So that saves, you know, depending on the complexity of your project can save minutes um, of your uh, pipeline runtime. Then it install, uh, installs dependencies, builds your front end, and then pings feature peak. Uh, basically, it just curls a bash script uh, that zips up your assets and sends it over to us. And then you can deploy it um, right on FeaturePeak. So this, this is like an example that comes from a pull request. Um, this is one of the, the pull requests that I made that was purposely failing. Um, but you see that it's still built, uh, although maybe some of the unit tests failed. And we can do things like add a new comment, create a new issue, um, yeah, tag some of our, our teammates to take a look at this. Um, and test things out like measure the distance between elements. A lot of cool stuff. So if, if you saw my talk on uh, Feature Peak Indie at the beginning of the keynote, um, that was how to use the uh, the CLI to deploy the feature peak. Well, this is a way to use uh, the CI or continuous integration to deploy the feature peak automatically. So basically on every push, every time you push a branch or open a pull request, uh, this action will run so that you'll get, when you go to the pull request, you'll get a, uh, a comment right in line on the PR that says, hey, this has automatically been deployed to Feature Peak. You can access it at any time using this link. And you can see the test running here. Um, this is also, I wanted to show everyone, uh, this was that uptime uh, service I found. I think this is a great way uh, to test out um, GitHub Actions. It's all open source. It runs entirely on GitHub Actions. You can, it's totally free um, and you can use it to test your services. Um, really cool way to dive into GitHub Actions. And then uh, this is basically the repo that I've set up uh, that shows If I go to chat, where is chat? Oh gosh, I'm a Zoom noob. <laughs> Let me stop my share. There it is. And paste it here. Cool. Um, so that. 
hopefully, you know, I covered kind of, of a lot. But if you have any questions, uh, you can feel free to reach out to me over Discord. I just pasted the uh, link to the repo that has lots of examples uh, that you can get your hands dirty with. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited to see what you build. Hopefully, you know, in, in the project that you're making for the social justice hackathon, you can add some automation in there. Uh, you know, automate all the pain points away. That's the fun part of being a software developer. So you have the power. Yeah, now, now uh, go ahead and I'm excited to see what, what you make. So I'm gonna open up the floor. Uh, if you have any questions, I can uh, answer them quickly. Um, or if not, you have if something comes to mind later, uh, you can reach out to me in Discord. Um, so yeah, I'll open up the floor if anyone has any questions. Otherwise, Navi, I'll uh, hand it back to you. Guys, if you wanna unmute yourself and just ask Jason the question directly. Um, so for someone uh, who doesn't have much experience with, uh, with automation and uh, triggers and things like that, what do you think is a good first, um, you know, first project or first thing that we can try with GitHub Actions uh, great. as like an entry point to learn? Great question, great question. Um, so one of the common things, if you've ever forked a repo, um, you'll notice that it's, it can quickly fall out of date. Right. As soon as you fork it, you, you're kind of making a copy of it at that point in time. Meanwhile, all this extra development is happening upstream, but your fork is still locked at that certain commit. You can have a GitHub action that runs on a cron job to check if there have been newer commits and auto merge them into your fork. So that, that's like a, a super easy way. Uh, thanks for, for mentioning that, by the way. I'll find that that's a um, predefined GitHub action that is on the marketplace um that that looks pretty popular so um yeah that that's that's that would be a good first one to um make sure that your fork is always up to date with upstream awesome thank you